welcome to an on-the-shelf episode of... Brutal Battle! So this is the 13th on-the-shelf episode, but I believe it's been a bit. 13? Yeah, I believe it's been a little bit since we did one. Hmm. Because we've been doing a lot of beer excursions and other things, so I want to get back to it. We've done a lot of beer excursions. We've also been recording a lot of Brewery Showcase episodes, Mm. too, which there are more that will be coming out as well. So I want to check back in. I don't want to go too long without doing on-the-shelf episodes because I feel like it's a good service to people because it's showcasing some beers that are currently on the shelf that just kind of hit within the past month or so, at least where we are. Right. Um, Usually I like to get like three beers that most people can probably get because they're from larger breweries, and then one local, sometimes two and two. Uh, With this one, I don't know what it's going to end up being because these are mystery beers. This is a unique format because it's not only on the shelf, but it's also going to be mystery beer format. Yes. And the thought behind that is it's also been a bit since we've done a mystery beer episode. So I figured let's roll it together and do these at the same time and it'll just be fun. Reached out to Mike at Wine World and he said, yeah, I can get them bagged up for you so i don't know what he did they could all be local they could all be oh so you didn't give him no no stipulation except that i i said just give give me beers that have come into your store within the last month okay because i want to be relatively fresh like be pretty current when the episode comes out that so So people know they can get some he i I don't know who knows but he did say until you record keep them in the fridge so that leads me to believe there's at least one that's hoppy. Okay. At least one. So other than that, but they are all 16-ounce cans. The other thing to say is when we usually do these episodes, we know what the beers are, so we set up a very intentional tasting order. Yeah, we have no idea. That's out the window with this. So we're just going to okay. taste it however it is, and you know, we could go from a stout to a sour to an IPA or from, like, an IPA to a lager to yeah. a stout. I, who knows? Okay. Well, so we'll my- find it. Glass is empty. So. All right, point to one. That one. Okay, that'll be our first one. This is like beer roulette kind of. 16-ounce can. And they're all 16-ounce Yeah, cans. all 16-ounce. Ooh, I think I smell hoppy. And it looks hoppy. It looks like that juice, brah. Yeah, it looks like Whoops. a hazy IPA. I had or hazy, who knows? There's That's true. Hazy I mean, pale ale. Not filtering beers is a thing now, and it's not exclusive to IPAs. I mean, I've seen plenty of instances hmm. where people are like, here's an unfiltered Kolsch. Here's an right. unfiltered Pilsner. Unfiltered Sour. Whatever. Okay, so what is it? I mean, it oh. looks like a hazy IPA, yeah. though. It's pretty orange. There's not much of a yellow hue, yeah. but it's pretty orange. Not much head, though. Mm-mm. Head retention is very low. Looks juicy. It's a mild nose. Yeah. It's way more mild than you would think, but it smells imperial to me. It smells floral to me. Yeah, there's definitely a a floral note. It's a little bit grassy, also a little pine and citrus. I feel like it's a little perfumey. Yeah, I could see that. I I get some, like, candied orange Mm -hmm. peel. Yeah, there's definitely some sweetness to it. Although it also smells a little bit yeasty, which I do get with your uh, New England style IPAs, hazy IPAs for those yeah. people who don't say New England IPA anymore. But these are, but they're all real subtle. Yeah, it's you not, know, yeah, I have to really s- stick my sniffer in. If it is a hazy IPA, the nose is not what you're used to. Usually, it's just like a juice bomb nose with lots of citrus. I don't smell a juice bomb nose with lots of citrus. It smells like it's probably higher ABV because it's deeper, darker smells. Um, yeah. It's very um, thick. It does have um, a yeasty finish. Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's supposed to be a hazy IPA. Um, I like it, though. I feel like there's a little bit of an aspirin note on it. Yeah, probably. I mean, I feel like it probably is higher in ABV, which is probably why you're getting that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I do. I, I do. like it, though. It does taste more alcoholic. Like, it tastes like 8%-ish. Mm. I like it, though. I get some flavor out of it. I get some pine. I get that floral you were talking about. Give me a little bit more. You know, a little bit more. I don't. I don't think it's my favorite, but I think I'll drink it and enjoy it. I mean, really, to me, 
I'm not big on it. I don't think I would buy it again, to be honest. Like, it just tastes like bitter and... Yeah, there's not a lot of... Yeah. There's not a lot going on. But I don't... I guess I like it... No, there's not a lot going on. More than I thought I would, just because it's not just super sweet and yeah. citrusy. Sure. Um, the... I do get that, like, candied orange that I said I was saying I got on the nose. I do get that in the flavor, but it is very subtle. And like we were saying, like, it's it's a little bit floral, it's a little bit piney, it's a little bit, like, candied orange, but it's not... It falls there's flat. There's not a whole lot of... Fl- like, it's not yeah. robust flavor, and it's very much overcome by bitterness, which I'm assuming is from the alcohol content, because you can tell it actually burns a little bit. So this is probably like a double or triple hazy IPA, in my opinion. I don't know. It's not doing a lot for me, I to be like, honest. I, I think it has to be more than 8%. Yeah, because w- when it sits, it's got like a little bit of a I burn. I feel like, yeah, an 8%, typically I don't perceive a lot of a higher ABV. Um. Actually, this is kind of weird, but I... I took a big gulp instead of doing, like, a sip of it. I took a big gulp of it. And that big gulp, actually, ironically enough, gave me more flavor. And I actually picked up some apricot in that that was actually pretty nice. So I guess maybe I just need to gulp this beer instead of sipping it. (laughs) Yeah. One of those hashtag chuggies. Yeah. Is that what people say? Chuggies? I don't know. I've never seen that. Is that it, it was something for a little bit in this beer group I was in. Mm-hmm. I was just like, it was people chugging, chugging beers. Oh. Usually like high ABV beers. And I'm just like, that's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was like when people were putting stuff up their butts with booze in it. <laughs> I don't. Were they doing? No, maybe it's just women <laughs> in their vaginas. I think they were soaking like tampons and vodka. I will say right now, I don't think that was a widespread thing. I think that was probably one of these things where a few people did it, and then the media picked up on it, and they were like, this is what young kids are doing these days. I don't think that was a widespread thing. It's just, you know. Anyway. So uh, let's find out. Oh, I have to rate it. Yeah, you got to rate this Um, I don't uh, hate it. I don't like it, though, really, either. I'm going to give it a three. Because I think it's less than average. Oh yeah, definitely less than average. I just gotta. F- <sighs> so that's how I do my rating. A five. Yeah, no, I know. Five is an average beer for me, and this is less than an average beer. <sighs> eh, I'm on a two. Okay. I'm not big on that. I don't really I mean, like I, it that much. I feel like a three. I'll drink a two. A two and below. I'm not gonna dump. If I didn't have to gulp it, take a big gulp in order to get the flavor that I got from that gulp, then I would upgrade it to a three. But I don't know. Okay. It's well, just rip like, it open. There's what a lot. It? There's a lot of bitterness from the alcohol. It's just, it's just very alcoholic. It's very uh, imbalanced, in my opinion. And that's one of the problems with the hazy IPA. When you go higher alcohol, that's what you're well, going to get. We don't know what exactly if that's what it is. What is this? I don't even know. Alsatian Brewing Company. I haven't even heard of these people. Looks like they're out of Virginia. It's called Hazy Mindset. It's a New England style IPA. 8.1%. I said 8%. Really? Yeah. That's what I thought I was getting. Uh, Yeah, they're out of... They have... I mean, they have the state of Pennsylvania on the can. Oh, Pennsylvania? Sterling. I'm sorry. Virginia. Virginia. Sterling, (laughs) Virginia. Oh, but interesting. Okay. Brewed and canned for Alsatian Brewing Company by Beltway Brewing Company. Oh. We we had really good things to say about Beltway yeah. because they were at Saver two years right. ago. Well, last year. And we really liked the two beers they had brought. So I guess they're in the contract brewing mm, game. Interesting. I like the can art. The can is cool. It's one of my favorite color combos, orange and blue. Uh, with a kind of like a cool like wave design like, on it, it looks nice. It's like striped like a zebra that's wavy. I'm just you know, it's okay. Some people could like this. I think it's a mistake to go higher ABV with hazy IPAs because I don't. They can't hold up usually unless you have a crazy amount of flavor beating that alcohol back, and this does not do that for me. So I don't know. All right, next one. Point to another one. That one. All right, we're gonna do this one now. They might all be hoppy, knowing Mike, because Mike just he, likes hoppy stuff. He does. Okay, that's his well, that's his primary. Mode. Well, and it's really the market. There's lots of. And it's been like that for years. So. Yeah, 
Right. Even more so, though. Ooh, and a skin. lot of uh, 16 ounce cans. I feel like. Yeah, and I was it's just like thinking the, the thing. I was just thinking back the other day to how there was a time when um some breweries were trying cans and it yeah. just was not working. Like they would just sit on shelves because people are like, what is this crap? Especially like 16 ounce cans and that was back in the day of yeah. people being like, well, it's just better if it's in a bottle. If yeah. it's in a can, it's going to taste like metal and blah, you know, but we've come a long way and just thinking back to then and how you just couldn't sell a can, uh, a 16 ounce can to now like people prefer it. Mm-hmm. I prefer it. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. So this one looks like not an IPA unless it's a fruited IPA. It's like, it's pink. Yeah, it's really nice looking. It's, um... Pretty good. Mm-hmm. Can't see through it. No. No. Um, it looks like maybe there's raspberry in it, maybe hibiscus. It's got that coloration to it. I don't know. You could go, like, a little pomegranate, too. Maybe maybe even blueberry. Sometimes blueberry mm-hmm. in beer looks like this. Yeah. It's a very pretty color. Uh, there's not much of a head. The head on it is very fine bubble. So It's not, it's not like a dark color. Yeah. No, it's not. Mm. Ooh, it smells like a sour. Yeah. But light. Very light it sour. It's like a tart sour. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I get a lot of that lemony sourness yeah. in the nose. I'm sniffing my arm. There is a fruit. There is a yeah, fruit. Yeah, I mean, I'm not getting a whole lot. Berry. Like some sort of dark berry, you know. It could very well be raspberry. It could yeah. definitely be raspberry. This could be like a raspberry goza. Mm-hmm. I, I do think I smell a little bit of a salinity. That's what I would. Just sniffing it, I'm like, oh, it's a raspberry goza. Yeah. But, okay, I'm going in. Yep, smells like a raspberry goza, like like we were saying on the nose. smells like, it's more like tart. It smells really good, to be honest. All right, Rebecca is analyzing. Hmm? It's not very oh. flavorful. It's kind of tart. There's a fleeting moment of a fruit. And that's it. It's like And then it becomes watery. Yeah. It's like tart, a little fruit, that's it. But these are not much like the nose, they're not very robust. Yeah, but the t- the thing is what's weird is that the tartness is very lemon. Could be a raspberry a lemon raspberry or strawberry lemon or lime. But yeah, it gets really it's like a flat. strawberry lemonade. It starts like, it kind of like pow with that tartness. Do na- do th- and na- then it's just like Do Natty nothing. Lights come in 16 ounce cans? Hmm? Natty Light. Natter Days? Natter Days, that's no. what they are. It, this tastes nothing like the Natter Days. This is way toned down from that. That, that Natter Days is like disgustingly sweet. This is far from sweet, yeah. which I appreciate. And for that reason, I actually don't dislike this beer. I think it's pretty solid because it's very sessionable. It is. It is. But for me, I feel like it's... Um, As you keep sipping it, though, and you're getting used to that tartness, it starts to... <coughs> excuse me. It starts to transform a little bit and move a little bit away from the lemon and get a little bit more to whatever that fruit is, which still seems raspberry. I don't... I'm not committing to raspberry. Yeah, I know. It's hard. It could be strawberry. But it's just very, it like, blueberry. L- light and watery at the it could end. be boysenberry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> blackberry, boysenberry, yeah. blueberry. And that's one of the things, like, we've talked about it before, where each fruit is kind of different taste-wise. And not just, like, raspberry versus blackberry versus boysenberry, but with, within its own fruit. You know, like, when you're eating a handful of blueberries, you know, you get one that's like super sweet, you get one that's super tart, and then you get yeah. one that's that perfect in the middle. So you kind of never know what you're going to get flavor-wise. So for that reason, you can get from batch to batch of fruited beers, you can get different, different flavors, yeah. even if you're using the same fruit from batch to batch. Right. So so for me, I feel like this is kind of on par with the first beer. Like I like it more than the first one. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to go with, um, a three. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know. I, I, like, I want to give it significantly more than the first one because I like it a decent amount more, but I can't 
because there just isn't enough flavor for me. Yeah. There just is not enough If this was more flavorful, it would be really good. Yeah, exactly. And it's not just that, too. It's also that it gets so watery and thin on the finish. And, I mean, that's good from the aspect of if you want to be out in the heat and you want a little bit of a sourness to a, a beer with a little, you know, hit of fruit. Like, this would hit that mark. Yeah. But... I don't know. It's just not, overall, it's not that impressive. It's okay, though. All right, so I'm giving it a three as well. Okay. So this is an overall three. The first one was an overall two and a half. Okay. So this obviously has performed better than the first one. Let me go ahead and reveal what we got here. And it is, there's there's a seal on it. It's Smutty Nose. Oh. It's their seal. The Smutty Nose seal. Ooh, ooh. Blueberry? Blueberry. There you go. Smutty Nose Blueberry Thrill Sour. Okay. Um, it's kind of, a, yeah. what is that, like 3 or 4%? Um, I, where, see, this is the problem. Is like everyone puts it in a different spot on their cans and bottles, and it becomes kind of hard to find. I don't see it. Is yeah. the ABV on the bottom? Oh, yeah. It's on, it's on the, um, the, uh, the can on date. They oh, okay. include it there. 4.2%. Okay. So. So it is super sessionable. Although here's what's interesting is that this just showed up at Wine World apparently and it was canned in April. And we're recording it in like mid-August. In August. So four, this is like four, it's not quite at the four month mark, but that beer took a long time to get to Wine World. So some of the blueberry could have fallen out. That's true, but um, you know it's fine. I'll I'll drink it. I will definitely drink it. That makes me want to check what's going on with the um that ale station brewing. This one was canned at the very end of July, so this is very okay. fresh. When we're doing it, it's like two weeks. Yeah, yeah like two weeks in the can. Um, I will have to say, I I really like this Money News Blueberry Thrill can as well. Yeah, it's it like looks a cool. blueberry. It's like black background. Mm. Um, and I think then, it's a navy blue. Is it? Yeah, it's a navy, navy blue. blue. It's hard to see with your lighting where you're sitting. Um, and then like the a blueberry bush. It looks it looks sexy. <laughs> like I said, like, like I would I would I'm buy fine, that. I'm fine with it. I don't think it's like an outstanding beer. I no. wouldn't necessarily recommend it to people. Yeah. And be like, oh man, you got to go out and get. But um, I'll drink it. I mean, again, it's, it's just so hard. In today's market, to have a beer where you're like, you have to try this or go out because the competition is just so yeah, it's steep. Not... I mean, yeah. I've had better sours, I've had better blueberry beers, I've had, I mean, better everything. I mean, a fruited, lightly tart sour beer like this, there's common. A, it's there's become a, common, and there's a lot out there. Yeah, it's um, super common. I mean, you know, this is in a 16 ounce can, which could be. An advantage. An advantage for some people. Um, well, and like I was saying, the situation for this beer is you want a sour that's very easy and you're in the sun. Like, but there's a lot of beer like that. That's true. You know, for the, for like that lightly tart. Or, mm-hmm. But anyway, I do. I mean, I would probably buy this if I didn't know it just because I, I like just the can. Just try. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? And it's like a blueberry set, like... And that's no. why we do some blind tasting and take the can art out of it. I know. So you can be honest. Because, yeah. you know, how else do you know? It's like, yeah. that's know. part of the marketing. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, boom. Okay, got it. Okay. All right, another 16 ounce can. I hope we have something dark. You know, I don't know. It's totally up to Mike. Because, no. Oh, no, it looks like probably another IPA of some sort. Because, you know, we're, so we're recording, what is this, August 11th? And those pumpkin beers are hitting the Ugh, shelves. <laughs> don't, let's, let's not. I know. Let's I know. Not. I feel because the I'm same way. I'm just going to go on a diatribe. It's okay. Just like this, don't do it. I mean, no, go ahead. You can. Like, no, it's I'm not. Fine. I just. I'm just going to say they're hitting the shelves. So I feel like we're going to have to do on the shelf pumpkin beer. Okay. Well, then that that's a good point. Okay. We will try whatever on this podcast. If you've been listening long enough, you know that. We will try whatever, and that's fine. Um, that's why we still drink hazy IPAs on here because, because otherwise I'd be like, I'm not doing that. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll try it. So people send an email or, or say something on Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Let us know. Do you want us to do some pumpkin beers? 
And if so, in what format style? Do you want them as mystery? Do you want them as an on-the-shelf? Do you want a them tournament. as a tournament? We, we did a pumpkin yeah. beer tournament years ago, though. I think it was like four, four or five years ago Sorry now back. is when we did it. It's been a long time. So we I could keep, do that. I it would be a- hell, but... I keep advocating for it, it, but then every year I'm like... You more, don't want to drink that. I know. More and more, I get less and less, like, more and more disappointed. Especially because we spend our money oh, on no. it. Like, we don't have these provided no, for we free. we are saving money. We are on a save, we're on a budget right now because we're saving for new furniture. Yeah. And we have plenty of beer to drink anyway. Well, and that's another thing about uh, doing these on-the-shelf episodes is that that's one of the main ways we try newer stuff because we have so much beer already. We try and focus on that. Yeah. Okay. So, so you smelled on. and we're like, what? This the? smells really good. It's very, you know, it's hazy, but not super hazy. And yeah. it's very orange. Yeah. Yellowish orange. It just it smells great. Is, I'm Ooh. assuming it's an IPA and it, Ooh. it just smells like heaven. It's like, Oh, Right? Oh my gosh, the smell on that is phenomenal. I mean, I've smelled more like oh my gosh, fruity or more citrus forward IPAs, but mm. this is just seems very well balanced on the nose. Yeah, you know, you're getting some of that citrus, definitely um, juicy orange, juicy tangerine, I get mango in there. Mango, you're getting some of that tropicality and maybe some pine. Yeah, um, from the mango, I think. Yep, all of that. I almost get a slight peach peeking yeah. through in the nose, too. It's just, like, beautiful fruit salad. It it's, smells so good. It's very layered, but it's oh also not gosh. overly sweet. And like, I'm not getting candied anything. Right. You know yes. what I mean? And that's an important distinction. That's true. Yeah, I agree with that. It kind of smells like a Trogues beer to me. It's got a little bit of a Trogues beer type smell when they do hoppy. Um, I don't know. It smells really good. Yeah, no, it smells... Crazy, amazing, good. This is one of the best IPA smells I've smelled in a while. Yeah. Uh, except for that half acre now and then. Oh, that, that IPA was, really was good. amazing. Um, um, just, it smells very complex. I'm hoping the taste lives up to the smell. Yeah. And it's just, um, there's a lot of uh, just, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, just lupulin in mm-hmm. there. You know, it's just, it's all the hop oils playing in your nose. Yeah. I don't smell a ton of bitterness, though, but it's just a little bit. Oh, I, I was getting a little. What do you get? Oh. So if it both had our first sip, I feel like it tastes very much like it smells. The bitterness is um, showing up, though, Yeah, I feel like this flavor. is... We kind of... We have similar yet different tastes on things, but I feel like with... How we would just describe, like, our perfect IPA, I feel like this is it. Um, it is... It tastes higher in ABV to me, though. Um, this also know. tastes on the imperial side. I don't like know, but I love it. It's eight, is, eight and a half. It is fruity. It is tropical. It has some bitterness. I'm getting, like... I'm getting, like, some malty yeastiness coming mm-hmm. through, which I am really yeah. digging. Yeah, there, there's more of a multi aspect to it than I was expecting. I do think that a lot of those flavors that we said we were smelling, they're there, but it's way dialed back mm-hmm. as opposed to the nose, which happens a lot in beer, to be honest. And then the um, that very present bitterness mm-hmm. coming in as well. Okay, so this is by far the best beer we've had today. It is good. There's more sweetness to On the a, flavor than I thought there was yeah. going to be based on the nose. Because on the nose, there really isn't sweetness, really. Um, but flavor, there's a I love decent it. sweetness, but I feel like the bitterness jumps in to kind of knock back that sweetness after you taste it. Carlin's like knocking something down. Yeah. So with with that bitterness coming into play, I think it's starting to be more like citrus peel for me. Okay. So. Call mm-hmm. it what you want. I still like it. That's a, that's a good beer. It's a good beer. It's not. It's not amazing. If it tasted exactly like it smelled, I would be like, "This is friggin' phenomenal." But it's good. It is good. I am enjoying it. And it's been, you know, like having had that one with pretty much no bitterness, the first one that Ale Station won, then going to a, another hoppy beer that actually has a decent bitterness, my palate has to adjust to mm-hmm. the bitter. And so that's been a journey as I'm taking sips, and it just 
after like maybe four sips or so, it's settled in. It's a journey. It's like, here we go. Mm. It's a journey. Well, I mean, it's the same type of thing as, you know, kneading your palate to adjust the, when you're drinking something sour. Yeah. It's well, got to settle like with anything. in. Yeah, it's got to settle in. Okay, so. Okay. I will open this one. No, no, no. You got to Oh you my gosh, rate I have to this, rate man. it. How are you, how are you going to not rate it? This is the one you said no. is the best. I'm trying to get this moving. Mm. Um, oh, I'm between two numbers. Okay. Oh. I'm between two numbers as well. You go first. So I'm between a four and a five, to be honest. Really? Yes. You, were you thinking higher? I'm definitely doing no, higher. I, I can't. Higher I can't and go higher. Um, I, because the reason I'm between, I'm trying to analyze why I'm between a four and a five, and I think I'm between a four and a five because at the five level would be me doing it partially because, uh, a lot of my comparison with hoppy beers right now is based off hazy IPAs, mm. and in comparison to a hazy IPA, I really like this. So I'm going to take that out of the equation. I'm going to go four. Okay. So again. Five is an average beer. I think for you, for me, for me, the average the average beer is like a three. Well, you're weird. Um, I'm well, gonna, sometimes too. So an average is a five. I think this is above average, so I'm going to go six. Okay. So overall, five. I feel good with the way that averaged out. That makes sense. You have any guesses? I think it's a Trogues beer. It kind of tastes a little bit like it. Nope. Adroit theory. Really. Okay, yeah. cool. I'm down. Their cans are always so scary. Oh, I love their artwork. Their artwork is phenomenal. <laughs> being being so someone scary. who likes horror you films, like horror. oh yeah. my gosh. Their artwork is phenomenal. But even even if you're not into horror, you have to admit, oh, it, the I artwork mean, is the amazing. Artwork, I can appreciate the artwork, oh, yeah. um, but it's terrifying. Okay, so this is a, by Adroit Theory. It is called Fiend Without a Face. Yeah, fiend without Without a face. face. It's a hazy double IPA. Da da da. And Adroit is out of Vint Hill, Virginia. Mm -hmm. It is brewed on July thirty first. Okay, so this one also is kind of like within two weeks. Mm -hmm. Nice. It is. Do you want to guess the ABV? Uh, I was saying it tasted like eight and a half. Eight, eight and a half. Ten. (laughs) Ten. Okay, I wouldn't wouldn't guess that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty good. It's, that's accomplished. Um, and I don't know if anyone who hasn't listened to the podcast or if you haven't had a Droid Theory beer, they often have food and mm-hmm. food pairings yeah. on it, which I, I always love, think is fun. That. That's so cool. So the food is beef brisket with slow roasted Romano beans and black olive aioli. You always pick like these wacky things that you're, you're <laughs> not going to make at home. You're just not going to do it. I feel like partially it's be, be, to be like... Look at how, like, highfalutin we are that we know this. I would have stopped at beef brisket. Um, cheese, uh, Roelli, Dumbarton Blue. I don't know. But and I then do they love have, some cheeses. And then they have a cigar. And it's, it has the recommended temperature to serve it at. Cool. Yeah, no, that's also I helpful. I think that's cool. Um, so I love that. I think here's, here's the thing about Adroit Theory. I've said it before. Like, I... I need to retry it though. Like I haven't enjoyed their barrel aged program because I feel like either you taste not enough barrel in it or it's way too much barrel. Um, but their straight styles have always been really good in my opinion. And like their, uh, Oh crap. Bays black is your soul is one of the best Imperial stouts. One of the best Imperial styles. I love it. I love their straight styles. And I'm going to surprise people and tell you that they, they've put out hazy IPAs. And I think their hazy IPAs are really good. Their EBK is are Android the ones theory? they put out. Yeah. Well, this is a hazy double IPA, and we liked it. Yeah, right. So. But I'm saying we've had a bunch of oh, other ones. Other ones. Got it. And I always like them. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. I think straight they styles, I like them a lot. The other they thing is stuff. to bring up the fact that... They were very nice, and they sent us beers. Yes, I was just going to bring that up, and it was yeah. beautifully packaged. Yeah. I mean, it was just, yeah. yeah. I like a droid there. I do, too. Cool. I do, too. I but like I said, just there, there, there was something about their barrel aging that I just can't. But like I said, it's been some years, so I should go back, and we should recheck that out. But if people wanted to know stuff about a droid theory, we did 
a showcase episode on them some years ago when they sent us the beer. So you can yeah. go back and search that. Gosh, that was a long the, time ago. Yeah, search it through the website or go to archive.org and search it through there. Yeah. So. Okay. Did I rinse these? Yeah. I did, okay. Okay, so which beer should I open now? Uh-huh, you're so funny. <laughs> only- okay, I hope this is a step. Yeah, I kind of do too because... Yeah, I just, I don't know. Something says something. I want the stout. Uh, uh, I don't know. The head's not the right color. No. There's a little head coming out. It's not the right color. Okay. Nope. Looks like it's probably another, like, hot It could be something. a blonde stout, though. <laughs> How many blonde stouts are out there, I know. I'm just saying it could be. It looks like How it many could blonde be. stouts have you had in your life? <laughs> like, one? No. Two? Maybe two. Yeah, yeah, it looks like many. it could be a, like a lager or pilsner or something. It's very clear. Yeah. Actually, it is. It's like super. I mean, there's a slight haze to yeah, it, but it that could, could be like chill haze, as people say. Could uh, be, um, yeah. Orangey yellow. Could be a color. goza. I don't know. It's got a decent head on it, but and the head is like very fine bubbles, which would lead me to believe something sour. Hmm. Yeah. It, I would say it's, oh, it's yep, sour. There you go. Yep. It smells like wine. Yeah. It smells like kind of like Sauvignon Blanc because it's kind of dry. It smells like a dry Sauvignon Blanc kind of. Yeah. Actually, I wonder if it's a barrel aged with. It smells good. Chard- <laughs> it smells good. It smells good. It, does, it smells really good. I mean, nice it smells tartness. good. I have. It, I don't think it's even my style, but I'm going to try to be very objective. There's something. Definitely. I'm definitely getting like the grape characteristics. Yeah. I'm definitely getting lemon. I'm yep. definitely getting tart. Yep. There's something at the end that I'm trying to figure out what that smell is. I think it's floral. Mm. Honeysuckle? I could go honeysuckle. Yeah, a little honeysuckle on the on the end. I could go honeysuckle. Mm-hmm. And there's like I don't know, I yeah. think I don't know. There's some sort of spirit that smells almost a little like rum on the end. Mm. Doesn't it smell a little rum-like? Okay. I don't know if I would pick that out, but now that you said that, I yeah, I could be persuaded. This is a really complex, it's weird very, yeah. smell. It makes me pretty excited, to be honest. And that smell paired with the color is weird. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Hmm? Yeah, what is going on? Yeah, I don't know. It's it's complex on the taste yeah, too. I got a lot of flavors happening right now. It's very grapey though. Yeah, but you get the naked cherry on the very very end. Yes. Um, is this some sort of goza? I guess because it does seem to have a salinity to it. It does. Which I feel like grows as you keep sipping it. Is it a barrel aged goza with honeysuckle? No. No. I, okay. So we talked about in depth about all the smells we were getting on this, but I don't feel like I taste those. No. I feel like it tastes more like a very soft, typical goza that's more on the sour side than a lot of gozas. There's has, There has to be some sort of fruit or something in it, though. You think? Yeah. Passion fruit? Because passion fruit can be pretty light. I just, the problem is I'm having a hard time fighting through the, that, like, very sour lemon that's in there, which is tasting good, in my opinion, because yeah. I feel like that salinity is kind of rounding it out at the end, but. There is, there's definitely a fruit in there. Would what you say passion it? fruit? Mm. Um, I don't know, but I get, like, a, a really quick note of pear, kind of. That's weird. I'm getting, like, a. I'm getting like grape. I'm still getting grapes. Apple. There's some apple okay. coming through. Okay. There's definitely some apple coming through. This could be wine barrel aged though. I mean, it definitely like it's got that kind of dryness that. Well, it has that complexity. Yeah, like it, I, it, it is complex. I'm still yeah. Oh man, I made a mess of the thing. You Where are you put? You need more? I, yeah, I feel yeah. like I need a little okay, more to fine. continue to analyze this. Okay. Whoa, whoa. Okay, Jeez. sorry. I have to do an aggressive pour because of how the... <laughs> an aggressive Yeah, pour. I do. Just be, because of how yeah. the uh, the bag is on it. 
because a lot of it like is like dribbling down the side and in, inside the bag, which sucks. Hmm. I like this. It is complex. I do There's too. a lot going on. It's nice. It's hard to pick out some of what's in there. Yeah. But I like that. And like he's me coming back for more because I'm like, what are you? What are you? Like, what's your steez? What what else could be in there? I don't know. I I mean, I feel like I can't even guess anymore. But I know I'm sure that whenever we re, uh, reveal it, it's going to be like, oh, okay, may or may okay. not be barrel aged, but I there is definitely some sort of fruit. Yeah. Okay. Is this like a tequila goza? Mm. Because I could see tasting it, I could see a tequila, tequila? angle. Yeah, I could. I was saying rum in the smell, but I could get a tequila. Oh my God, I haven't had tequila in a long time. And I just don't do like spirits. So, okay. uh, what do you want for your number um, on this? I'm going to give it a six. So, same as the yeah. Fiend without a face. Okay. Because, mm-hmm. um, again, I think it's slightly above average. Uh, 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 I like. Uh, I'm between a five and a six on this one. I like this. Um,. I don't think I can go six. I can go okay. five on that. Okay. So this is a five and a half. So it's actually funny because it went the first beer two and a half, second beer three, third beer five, and fourth beer five and a half. So it just kept going up. Okay. Any, uh, so you think any guesses? I think some sort of barrel aged goes uh, maybe with some fruit. Maybe okay. not, though. I could see those being natural flavors. Yeah. It is hard. And this is a bitch to open. Try and do it off the table if you can, because it'll make a lot of noise. There you go, yeah. You can get from the bottom, because it's soaking wet, wet on the bottom. What is it? Who dat? Mm, okay, who, no, who dat? we did not pick this flavor out. We know nothing. We, no, we do know something. First of all, <laughs> another fucking sexy can. Oh, I dropped the F-bomb. I'm not supposed to. You can every now and then. Okay. That's fine. We have an explicit tag on it, just in case. Just in case, Rebecca slips up. Okay, it's by perenni- Perennial. Oh, Perennial. Okay. It's a Goza style ale with key lime. Oh. Okay, well that's why we were getting such a strong lemon. I get lemon and lime confused in beers a lot of time. So that makes sense. Um, And the name of it is called Suburban Beverage. Oh! I've had this before. You have? Yes. Um, As a tasting at... Uh, the Growler Fill Station at Wine World some time ago. When I tried it, I remember not thinking it was all that great. Well. But, um, you know, different batches of beer. It's 4.2. It's good. And it is another. I love the can. It's just like people, people at a, at a pool. pool and there's like barbecue and it's fun. It's like this kind of simplistic animation. Yeah. Looks cool. Perennial. Okay. Perennial. We haven't had anything by Perennial on the podcast in a long yeah. time. Okay, so let me look at this. So, actually, this is a pretty good mix that Mike gave us because two sours, two hoppy beers, and Smutty Nose is pretty decent distribution size. Perennial, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and then the Alsatian is probably pretty small. And Adroit Theory's small, but, like, Ish. not super yeah. small, so... Yeah, no, good range. Good good job, Mike. Thanks. And uh, obviously the winner of it is this perennial suburban beverage. The runner-up <laughs> to it being the Adroit Theory. Um, Adroit Theory Fiend Without a Face. And then coming up the rear is the uh, Smutty Nose Blueberry Thrill Sour. And then the Ale Station Brewing Company Hazy Mindset. So for me personally, my favorite was the suburban beverage. Rebecca, you were between The Fiend Without a Face and The Suburban Beverage, so if you had to make a choice between those two, which I would, would go, you go Fiend Without a Face. Okay, so you would give the edge to the Adroit. I player. would. Cool. Okay, this was fun. Uh, I think I want to do more on the shelves like this. Do you? I'll do whatever that gets, whatever you need me to do to get to the beer. <laughs> yeah. That is something we've been doing where it's like, you can't drink beer unless you record. Yeah. I'm like, well, okay. not always, but... You know. Like, I'll record to get to the beer. Get to the beer. Okay, cool. I'm going to enjoy this, um, finishing this off. Yeah. So. Um, and props yeah. all the can art. Yeah, Love can it. art, super cool. 
All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for checking this out. Like I said, uh, the idea about the pumpkin beer stuff, hit us up on social media if you want to. Uh, which, what's our Instagram? Is it just Brutal it's Battle? Brutal Battle Podcast. Okay. And on Twitter, I'm Brutal Battle. I'm Carlin at Brutal Battle, so you can just do that. Uh, Facebook page, we have a Facebook page. You can put it on that. Just search Brutal Battle. Um, you can do the email. It's probably the easiest, which is Brutal Battle Podcast at gmail.com. Because I check that the all the time. not the easiest, necessarily. Okay. Not the easiest for you people, but the easiest for me. Yeah. But Rebecca keeps pretty close tabs on Instagram. I'll see things on Twitter yeah. pretty easily. So, yeah, go ahead. I got the Insta locked down. And like I said, if you want to check out old episodes, um, two things we brought up. The old pumpkin beer tournament and our old uh, episode of the showcase for Adroit Theory. Best ways to do that through the website, BrutalBattle.com. Just search it in our search function or through archive.org, which is where we host all of our episodes. You can just do a search like Brutal Battle, Adroit I'm Theory. Gonna, I'm going to advocate for a pumpkin tourney. I mean, I'll, here's the thing. If we hear from some listeners and they want that, okay. I will I will certainly do it. No problem. I'm going to open up a bunch of new email accounts <laughs> and email Brutal Battle. If it's only you advocating for this, <laughs> You're not I'm, not, I'm You're not, not doing gonna know. it. I'm going to be like... If it's only a, you, I'm not going to do it. I'm, gonna make I'm a, not doing it. You're not going to know. I'm going to make fake emails. If we get enough people, if we get... Okay, by enough people, you mean like one. Nope. If we get 10 people... 10? Yep. We don't even have 10 listeners. We do. We have more than 10 <laughs> listeners. If we get 10 listeners who reach out and say, you got to do pump, a pumpkin beer tournament, we will do it. Okay. I will, I will, hands down, be like, yep, let's, let's get it going. So, all right. Okay, listeners, come on. Thank you, everyone. And until next time, keep it brutal. This has been a Nerd Circle podcast production. 